was back. There we go. And just and time for the sirens. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can just hear that. Just in time for the fire sirens. <laughs> they have a parade for us outside. Yeah. If we started out. Yeah, they, they heard it was episode 31, and they were like, oh, boys, Sound we Sound the you. alarm. Woo, woo. <laughs> I don't think, it doesn't show up that much on, uh, like, the actual recording as it does when we hear it. Like, we hear it in the headset, in the microphone, but it doesn't show up as much. Oh, does it not? I don't think so. So people just think we're being crazy. Maybe. Okay, that's We're fair. just making shit up. We're just hearing things. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. What's up? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us on this early morning, well, I think uh, mid-afternoon. It's afternoon now. Yeah, this is early morning in California. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so for all you West Coast but, uh, people, good morning. Good morning, everybody. See so who we got out here. Justin Johnson, Tim Parker, Chris Crowder, Jimmy Shooter. Jimmy Shooter. Aldelega. Jimmy should have been a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, up, everybody. Dude, by the way, Jimmy, we got... I'm. Me and Austin got to make a trip out to your ramp, dude. I told him. I was like, yo, next time you have like a barbecue jam thing, whatever. It looks way too it. chill. I know. It looks way too chill. <laughs> it looks way too chill. <laughs> it's been too chill there lately. Yeah, you guys did a good job on that ramp. It looks legit as fuck. It does. Yeah. It looks good. He has a crazy story behind it, too. We got to tell you about it. Oh. We yeah. got to have him on, too, and Majet. So Maybe we, we'll do it that day when we, we do We got to do another Philly trip. There anyway. we go. Okay. Maybe we could do it on the on the mini ramp. No, we gotta keep that for skating. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> we'll do it like the 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 MTV games and shit. Like we'll be here, and then the mini ramp will be in the background when people mm -hmm. skating. That'd be sick. That would be cool. Yeah, we could call people out and, and live. And in order for that, we'd have to have like a complete '90s like garb or wardrobe <laughs> just to make it like fitting. Like you know, I'll be Pat Parnell. Yeah, and you can... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have a. will be AJ Jackson. A helmet with hyper stickers. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, stickers yeah. And off, uh, Lightning TRS doing hand uh, hand plants. Shoot, it'll be all about that. He's down with that. I think he might have some of that gear at his house. Maybe. He's such an OG. He, Maybe. He, he, he seems like the kind of guy that saves things. I never asked him things. about that. I never asked him. He seems like, <laughs> he seems like the kind of guy. that type of guy. He seems yeah. like the kind of guy that's like, yo, check out this like really old blade thing I have. <laughs> I bet, dude. Watch, he has a whole watch when that. we go to his house. He's going to be like, yo, check out these really old skates. I'm, I'm curious about that now. Yeah. He'll, he'll bring like when we have him on the episode, he's going to bring out like, dude, check like like Ryan Jacklin brought a so. box of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's be like, dude, check this out. Right, we'll see. We'll see what he's got going on. <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Of course, uh, every, spiel it up. every time the spiel, um, yeah, follow us on all of our platforms, Instagram, go to YouTube, hit the subscribe, but also hit the notification bell because the notification bell, just like it, we've, uh, Austin and I have discovered recently yeah. when we start an episode, it goes ding, ding, and then you just, mm -hmm. you know, drop everything you're doing before, put everything down. before you continue with that, I just want to say something on that. When we post about like an, ep like we're going live with these people, whatever, don't message us what time. That's why we're telling you to put the, the bell notification. Everyone's like, what time, what time, what time? We don't really know what time. Yeah. We well, just, well, sometimes. But, sometimes. But, but, but on, on these days when we, like today we're doing three. Yeah. Right? And people on different schedules and stuff. Yeah, so we don't schedule. really know. We don't want to lock it down. Like, oh, we're doing like one o'clock. And, right. and then anyway, people always say, well, what time is that? And where I live or where exactly. I live. So just subscribe, hit the bell. That way you just know automatically. Hit the bell. Keep your phone on loud all day. Full blast. Just in case. Full blast. <clears throat> yeah. So um. anyway, iTunes. Please go to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating and uh, give us a review if you like us. And if you don't want to give us a five-star rating, don't give us one at all. It's okay. We just want five or nothing. <laughs> five or nothing. Five or nothing. We don't want anything else. Um. Yeah. And, and uh, everything else, we got new episodes coming up all the time. So definitely like go on YouTube and check that channel because Austin's been doing some really cool stuff, cutting up little uh, well, we've all been segments. Doing really cool stuff. But the but the segments I think oh yeah we yeah cool. our YouTube we have a lot of uh, highlights up there now yeah I think that's really so check them out I'm trying to post them like every day every couple of days something like that mm -hmm. so just aside from the full episodes we got the highlights too yes um, also want to thank our Patreon supporters this month uh, our new Patreon supporters we have Mike Garlinghouse and John Fromm. So thank you to Mike and John. Not only do we know those guys, but their, na their names are yeah, really, really like, easy to say. Every, every, also, everyone should know them too. Yeah. So Good guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. And on the same note, we have our monthly supported giveaway mm -hmm. for... We're doing it for May now because we have to wait for the payments to clear to do it, to, to qualify you. So we... Oh, yeah, I got to do this live. I forgot on the Instagram yeah. to prove that it's real. Um, so to like, keep us valid. If you don't know, um, we to have a show it's not a corrupt system. Yeah. We yeah. have a monthly supporter giveaway. So... Um, if you donate to our Patreon, um, you'll automatically enter every month for a random giveaway to pick one of anything out of our uh, online store. So we're doing it this month now for May, and I'm going to go live on Instagram so people know that we're not full of shit. Where are we at? Right here. Okay. 
So we got everyone's name in here. We're doing the we do not supporter giveaway. Corruption. No, no collusion here. Here we go. No Ready, collusion, boom. no corruption. We're rolling. We're rolling. Who we got? Who we got? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Nico Salomon. Oh, Nico hey. Salomon. <laughs> 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 okay, let's post that. So congrats, Nico. Um, we'll reach out to you, or if we don't reach out to you in the next day or two, hit us up. Just, and, just in case we forget. Yeah, because we might forget. <laughs> but we've been pretty good with it so far. So and pick one of uh, you know, your favorite Jump Street garb. Yeah, whatever it is, let us know, and we will get it out to you right away. So thank you so much for your support to everybody. Thank you Not just much. Nico, but... <clears throat> yeah, everyone. Also, as, as always, as every episode, episode 31 is no different. We have a WTF of the week. Yes, we do. What's the WTF for this week, Austin? This week, it comes to us from Jay Yoon from Korea, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Oh. Well, backflip oh. to shoot the duck. The double grab backflip oh, yeah, du- to shoot the duck, <laughs> land on the oh, duck. Oh, that's us right there. <clears throat> and that's us. <laughs> and that's us. Hey, Lovely. how you doing? <laughs> hey. So congrats to Jay Yoon yeah. for your backflip to shoot the duck. He's a young buck out of Korea. In the teens, he just. I feel like there's a whole group of young dudes that. Uh, it's not even what I feel; it's what I've just seen. Everybody in Korea who's I've killing se- it is like fifteen like and under. Fourteen. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was just um. Oh man, I forgot his name, and he, he definitely deserves a shout out. But um, <clears throat> a fourteen-year-old kid from Korea just was uh, eligible to skate the feast. I think that was that kid, Jay. Oh, is that him? I think so. Wow, that kid's. Ki- I could kid. be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was him. Yeah, that kid did a Jay. trick on the. Um, He's really good on the mega ramp. That that one trick, the uh, fakey. Bio 540, like to flat deck. I don't know. I don't remember. It's crazy. <laughs> really good kids out Whatever, there. Whatever, we'll pull that out next All week. Right. <clears throat> so, should we keep it moving now? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have a very, very special guest. Very. Who's been incredibly active. And I got to be honest, I'm jealous when I look on his Instagram. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Me too. Because he's just go- every, oh, literally nonstop, all everywhere. Over the place. Where there's things happening and he's nonstop skating. He's and there. Wherever it's happening, he's there. Yeah, it's awesome. We're gonna find out more about it. So everyone, welcome Grant Hazelton. Woo! Grant, welcome. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Boom! Thanks for coming on the show. Welcome to New York, your home state. Yeah. Welcome back. Thanks good. for doing your hair this morning too. <laughs> <laughs> it's real wavy, real smooth, real wavy. <laughs> I had to wash it after New York City skating. Yeah. Do you, you wash it every day when you can skate in New York? It's so dirty. <laughs> and this humidity, all, you know. All, all the taxis drive by and just like it gets clouds puffy. of dust in the fucking streets and the buses and stuff. Yeah. It's more like also when uh, when I fall and sweep the ground with it. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. You end up like leaves and shit and you have cigarette butts. <laughs> oh my God, that's <laughs> that's got to be terrible. That's not funny. Yeah. yeah so, so thanks for coming out here. And you've been all over the place lately. And this is one of your stops, I guess. What, are you here for any particular reason or are you just. Uh, just. Wanted to come back to New York City, visit Mike. we working on a little edit. Oh, so you are working on something? Yeah. Okay. I didn't uh, know if this was just a random stop for you, because you always like stop by anyway. Right. Um, yeah, it was just a general idea to do something small. Um, we, just a personal edit kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's on my way. I was planning this month was kind of a road trip month, and I was going to go from here, like home, Rochester, through New York City, down through DC area, and then to Oak City to skate with Long. Oh, yeah, you told me that you were doing that. Um, and then, like Atlanta, Georgia area, my boyfriend has a, a house down there. So I mm-hmm. so stop there for the holiday for 4th of July and then make my way back up through Chattanooga, Tennessee. Like, I haven't Damn. quite. <laughs> it's crazy. I haven't figured the that string of cities. quite that part yet out, but it'd be. A, about another month on the road. So you, <clears throat> you've been traveling a lot lately. Yeah. And that's because you quit your job to skate pretty much. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask about this too, because <laughs> as, as much as I've been following you on Instagram, I just see like, you're literally every place for like the past year. And I'm like, how does he do, do this and manage this? And like, it's yeah, like awesome. reg- regular people shouldn't be that free. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> And I'm just like yeah. living vicariously through you. But um, so t- t- like, could you talk about like starting that this yeah. blade mission? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It um, you know, I mean, I've been blading for a long time twenty, twenty four, twenty five years, something like that. Um, and it's just always something that I've loved. It's always been fun, but I never had any real 
like specific goal with it. I just wanted to do it as much as I could and, you know, have a good time. And I guess as I've been getting older, I kind of have realized how important it is to me and how it just, it's almost always fun. And there's, you know, the new experiences and just uh, out of all of the things in my life, it's one of those things that I've always enjoyed. So as I was, I was working a normal job, been 10 years at the same place and kind of getting to the point where that wasn't like, that was just not good anymore. And, you know, I had some conversations with family, like my mom and my grandfather were kind of like, so what are you doing? Are you happy? Like, what do you want to be doing? And both of them sort of uncharacteristically, were like you should do what makes you happy. Like, cause I just sort of thrown out the idea of like, yeah, I kind of thinking about mm-hmm. quitting my job. You know, I've been saving money for this entire time I'm working. Like I could survive for a while and just skate. And I was really surprised. Both of them were very supportive I'm surprised like, to hear that's that too. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> it was just, you don't, I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think I would. Yeah, someone that, in the yeah. mid 30s, like, yeah, I'm just gonna quit and, and play on my rollerblades. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, I mean, my grandfather kept asking. He's like, so what are you gonna do when you're done? And I'm like, I don't know. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This it's a sort of new journey, hmm. sort of hoping to, you know, expand my horizons, travel to places I hadn't, um, maybe just work on myself. You know, sort of character building kind of adventures and and learning to kind of explore and not be so caught up in planning and controlling things like i've always planned stuff too much kind so, of to see where, where, see where it takes you kind of thing <laughs> yeah so i uh in <clears throat> december my last day of work was right before christmas and i went and did you know some family stuff and that's a lovely christmas gift yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> f work yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean they weren't thrilled i gave them like two months notice but mm-hmm. That's a long time. Yeah. Two months. Yeah, what else I, can you give them? Right. I, but I'd been there for 10 years. Yeah. I was managing a department. Like, that uh, was. You were a badass to them. They loved you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, it, it sort of made my place there. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to see what I could do. And uh, my boyfriend, too, was always like, same idea. He's like, just if you love it so much, try it. You know, if, if you fail, you fail. But like, you know, you're not going to regret taking that opportunity. So, yeah. Um, and your job wasn't anything you were like invested in, right? Like, was yeah, it, I mean, I didn't go, you to don't want to do that for the rest of your life. Right. That was part of the thing. I was, uh, so I was just about sort of, uh, like invested in the retirement program there. So like 10 years oh, you in, you get like another sort of tier of retirement. And it's like, so I could either put the money that I already earned away at work and, you know, not be able to take it until I retired or, quit and take the money so give me the money (laughs) i had some money saved there too and it you know that helped with what i'd save myself and i was like okay i I have a budget for myself i think i can do this for about a year and travel so that was part of trying to do the road trip thing is keep it cheap but i mean my my first road trip was four thousand miles and like 20 (laughs) i think i was on the road for like 26 or 27 days like i ended up in austin damn yeah i saw that it's... like that was a, a really good first trip yeah other than my truck broke down twice <laughs> you always have these car problems <laughs> but you know i had a like bin full of tools and you know helpful people along the way so mm-hmm. that's just part of that adventure you and know? you don't know how long you're doing this for right i mean i'm aiming for a year so like, what if you how, go how, longer? how long has it been it's just about six months now did you take a, f- a few flights too yeah so the my first uh i guess non-driving trip was winter clash yeah and first time in europe and so i went to winter clash with a, a group of friends um and i mean everybody was at winter clash yeah it was so that such was a cool. heavy winter clash yeah like i just uh, you know i was like holy shit you're here you're here like yeah. awesome and then there was six of us that kind of went together to barcelona afterwards and we met up with another whole group yeah of, you know 20 more people that yeah. are all mike was there Barcelona. for like a month or something right like yeah it felt like that like three I, weeks or something something like yeah. that because he was doing stuff with mm-hmm. uh, them and so that was barcelona was about two weeks i stayed a couple extra days on my own and just kind of wandered around and then i went to <laughs> were you doing them like just buy one-way tickets here one-way ticket here um i had my like you know i bought my ticket to barcelona to 
Eindhoven and then Barcelona. Mm. And then I just kind of left the middle open. Yeah, it was like, open-ended at that point. I had a return ticket. Oh, okay. From Paris. Oh. Like, <laughs> <sick>. <laughs> so I ended up going... I didn't know you went to Paris. Yeah, Paris was five days. Okay. I think. Straight from Barcelona? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. That's where so it that, gets that was the middle part that was like interesting. So I went from Barcelona to uh, Venice and from like explored Venice a little bit oh, and then fun. I got to go to the Rossi's headquarters oh yeah that's right like, so uh, you went there. Martina who's one of the team managers like she met me in Venice to help you know with the the language barrier and just I mean Rossi's has been really cool and yeah um like Martina and Marco are just always really friendly and helpful and like we're all kind of on the same page mm-hmm. so it was nice to you know I met them at Winter Clash and everything but I got to hang out with them a bunch so I went to Venice and then the Rosie's headquarters and got to see the factory. That's and, pretty cool to see that. Um, you know, talk to Alessandro and like just see everything. Like it was, yeah. you know, that kind of surreal, I don't know, like Willy Wonka and the chocolate yeah, factory yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like how am I here? Like this, you know, it's yeah. just so much history. Did you ever see the <clears throat> Rosie's 96 video team video? Where they took a tour of the Rosie's factory? No. Tom Fry took either. a... You don't remember that yet? Mm-hmm. Tom Fry and... I don't remember who else. Took a tour of the Rosie's factory when they were making the Majestic 12s and stuff. And it was like probably like the same thing. Yeah, I got to... They, you know, like assembled one on the line. Oh, oh yeah. So it was yeah. like, oh, do you want to see one? Like, go go together. <laughs> That's, That's fucking really sick. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah I, f- I feel like that, that company, like, um, because they're in Italy, like, they don't... You don't get to see that as often as you would with, like, some other companies. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, there was so hospitable and just like happy to have someone there you know i guess i think not necessarily that i was on the team kind of thing but just also like you care enough to come and check it out yeah yeah it's nice like, just you know they also seemed really pumped on it and i mean i was i got to see new skates yeah. i got to like you know hold the fifth elements yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. like, actually like you know see some samples of other stuff that was going on so it was just really one of those things that i think you know you told maybe teenage me that this was going to happen. Like, <laughs> right. No, yeah. It's not. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so how involved are you in Rosie's now? Cause they don't have like the, you guys are all like ambassadors, right? It's not like a team. It's not like a pro team M team, stuff like that. Is everyone well, involved just as much? So they've, there is the pro team, you know, that's, oh, there is a pro uh, team. Nils, Uto, Bobby. I didn't it's, even know that. Yeah. So they're like the pro team and the rest of us are ambassadors. Okay. So there's just sort of the, the pro and then an ambassador yeah, yeah. level. Um, and I, we've got, you know, a couple of sort of group chats going for different things. Okay. Uh, that the Sesame Skate mm-hmm. was kind of a, a team collaboration. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we got asked our opinion on colors and accents and, you know, kind of as a group, what we'd like to see. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So, so, like, they keep everyone involved? Yeah. That's yeah, really important. Involved. And it's like, you know, it's sort of as much as you want to be. You know, you can put yourself out there more and, and talk to the people involved more and get more information or you can kind of just do your own thing and promote your own way. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, that's cool though. It's it seems cool really that, flexible and it's cool. They're open to, um, you know, listening to the voice of people who are, you, yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the pro skates, it's, you know, it's a really, you know, they get to choose their colors and accents and liner materials. And, mm-hmm. um, that seemed like I got to at the factory like flip through some of you know they have these big sample books of fabrics and damn that's stuff sick. Like that. that was sick if they were like yo oh, Grant you can fun. make one skate of any kind that you want right now damn. right yeah that would have been so sick <laughs> that's sick I would, I would go all out if they give me that option I'd be like a leopard print on the left liner zebra <laughs> on the right you got like, <laughs> like all this crazy shit going on just cause that's that'd awesome. be a sick one off yeah there was still some of those uh, the Arlo <clears throat> the Arlo Valos yeah oh, what? they still had them there yeah was there anything else crazy in the factory that like you saw? I mean, there was just lots of like there was a uh, you know like a conference room that had a whole shelf of kind of old Rosie's memorabilia. Yeah, I would imagine like, something I, like I that. Found, like there was a pocket watch with like the Roach logo on it, hmm. and you know hats and just all that like old accessory cool stuff, stuff. You yeah. know that like the '90s brought us. That was like, why does this exist? Yeah. Just because it can. They don't have like Damn. a wall of like all the skates from like. The Majestic 12s, all like originals, all the way up, like the chocolates, like all this stuff. Uh, the conference room had most of their skates. Mm-hmm. Chocolates. It... <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> chocolates. Um, yeah, a lot of skates were in there. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't think it wasn't like every model, but there was uh, like Alessandro had like the original, um, like the, the rollerblades that were made by 
like the Rossi's factory, like the, mm. the red ones with like those frames that look like an erector set. You know, you could put the bolts like anywhere. Hmm. What? I don't I don't those. Did you want more water? Is that what you're? No, it was, it was coffee and oh. I'm out. It's all done. Okay. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you were like, because I, yeah. I have the water no, here. No, that's fine. But the, there was a big wall display with like the, the growl. Like oh, yeah. It was the oh, Blake Dennis sick. Pro model, but it was like, that's you know, sick. on this like mall looking display with. Oh, man. Yeah, see, I would like. <clears throat> I love that era. Like that. I like, love that Rosie Like era. every fifth element like color way or something like that and hanging out. I don't know. Cause they had yeah. a lot of fifth element colors that I saw afterwards. I didn't even know existed <laughs> until like a few years ago. Right. I guess cause I don't know either no one had them or, or they weren't popular or they weren't out in America, whatever it was. Yeah. I don't know. I had you you know, didn't one, see any of that stuff. One pair of fifth element. <laughs> oh, did you, you had them back in the day? Yeah. When I was, I don't know. I think it was my third pair of skates and they were size like 11 and a half. The white ones, the red ones, red, the red. Yeah. See, those are the main ones, those like the red, good. the red and white ones. Yeah. And then oh, like those, those the, yellow. Well, those came. Those green. come out afterwards. Oh my Yeah, those gosh. were later. The yeah. Yellow. The honey. Yellow, the honey. Green. The honey fifth. Blue. <laughs> yeah, the green. Blue. And oh yeah. The navy right. kind the of. The cooties, right? I think they were the cooties. No, they were still blue fifth elements. Were cooties they? were afterwards. Okay. And then there were all sorts of cooties and growls that yeah. were like the zip up. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Co- but, wow, what a name! I hope they don't cooties. bring those back. <laughs> cooties and growl. What are, what, are, what are these names? Yeah, it's so sick. I, yeah, are they Italian? Know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think know. that if one's Italian out there. Know what these words mean? Well, I think Rossi's means what roaches in Italian. Okay, I right? didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, I, well, that's sort of that's how you say it. You know, if you were Italian, you're actually roaches, like, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, not Rossi is like I'm yeah. saying it, but yeah. I'm not gonna try to pretend to but say no one it. in the yeah, world really. says what, it that way yeah, we guess. can't change we can't i think change. i learned while i was there you know to like roll the r but there's no way i can do it on command yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Roshis>. <laughs> okay so so basically then then italy and then after that you went to paris or? yeah italy like so i went to venice mm. and rosie's is an hour north of venice mm. and then i went to rome to stay with Sick. marco and martina and they just you know showed me all around like we did the kind of touristy the whole thing yeah that's, that's cool you had people stuff. to show you around yeah stuff. i don't know how i would have done like out of all the places that, like rome to me was more confusing yeah um and seemed sort of seems like a hectic, hectic city yeah. yeah but so i was yeah really lucky to have a lot of people around. on vespas and shit <laughs> <laughs> like vespas everywhere is what i think of <laughs> yeah but that, they were really fun to stay with just you know to talk and get different perspective and um i feel like they have a really good view of of what you know they want rosie's to be and sort of what the team is and kind of building it back up. So uh, I just feel like, you know, thankful to be part of something that, I mean, I'd skate the skates anyway, I've been skating yeah. mm-hmm. them. Um, but something that, you know, I I guess that I would choose even if I wasn't part of it. And it, it seems positive and along the lines of what I think rollerblading needs. Yeah. Um, I like that they were sponsoring a lot of people who weren't, getting either recognition I, mean, I feel like people like i don't know people needed to go somewhere like bobby like has like a you know got recognition joe at the time was getting like a pro skate and like all you guys are getting sponsored too by them and i feel like that was a nice void that was being filled with rosie's doing that yeah and i, I know they they'd really like to focus on youth it's just yeah that's what it looks like too exactly like that's kind of how always... ssm was doing yeah, uh, it's it's always part of the conversation too when we talk about like what do we need, what does the team need, mm-hmm. what direction are we going. It's like, any of you guys know anybody like under eighteen that's really good or that, <laughs> that's showing promise that we could encourage? And it's it's kind of sad because we talk about that. I'm like, I don't know anyone. You know, yeah. yeah. The the younger I think generation now is they're in their early twenties or their mid twenties, and we're yeah. in our thirties talking about younger kids, and it's you not... gotta go to Korea. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you gotta go to Korea. <laughs> much, right? That, that's like... what is what it seems like. Because I, yeah. I couldn't, I haven't been able to think of anyone that I know or have encountered, you know, in their like teens, a teenager. Yeah. yeah, that isn't already like spoken for or <clears> right, just... right. There, there's, there's, I've seen a few like young kids like via like Miguel's. Oh yeah, there's Instagram. some LA, so, some like, yeah, some there's, of those guys. It's few and far between, like young young kids mm-hmm. but they're there but again like uh the at the place of to be like ambassador or something they're not there yeah. yet but there's kids doing it but mm-hmm. it's 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 yeah it's not like yeah it's yeah. funny that our our youth is 20s <laughs> yeah, yeah i know that is a funny observation <laughs> everyone's an adult <laughs> right yeah was it weird like were you ever sponsored before rosie's no it's like i was actually thinking about it earlier because so i was uh when i went in college in buffalo we had an indoor skate park and one of their little competitions, like if you win, you get a year like on the team. 
Like, mm-hmm. so you just get in free for a year. So, like, I won that. Like, at the skate park, you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, they give you a T-shirt that says team on it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> team. That's such a big deal Which back in the day. Which is also, no, yeah. really well, no, that sick. Was, dude, that was when I was in college. I was still oh, like okay. 20, okay. 20 <laughs> still. or something, you know. Um, but that, that was, like, the first sort of thing like that. And the only one, really. So this, you know, I've been skating for a really long time. But I think unlike some people, like, I wasn't really good when I was younger. I didn't throw myself at stuff i just kind of skated um and the guys i say so you weren't really good when you were younger yeah you were really good as long as i've known you i've known you for a while <laughs> I, I think i guess in my mind i'm better now than i've ever been yeah yeah um yeah you're, you're just getting really good right now so I, I think it was just a slower build than some people mm-hmm. and maybe because i didn't throw myself at stuff i didn't get hurt as much so i am maybe a little more able to go a little harder now at least for myself but the people I grew up skating with yeah. really kind of stuck in simple things. Like I remember going out skating for the day and the whole idea was that you did the rail or the spot. Of course, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, hey, okay, you, you go try a soul grind, try mm-hmm. a kind grind, try something. Anybody did a single grind on the thing we're skating and it's like, sick. That's, yeah. You did that's, it? Yeah. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, I think I spent, you know, three or four years like sidewalking everything in my town because I, I didn't know Sick. that it wasn't a, like actual trick you know like mm. i didn't know i was doing it wrong <laughs> damn it's debatable so you know so but it wasn't like a good yeah. side it was like okay. a middle ground so okay. it like, could be anything okay uh, hey you know you're making up tricks <laughs> there's no rules but that i, I don't but know yeah, just the, slow the, build kind mean, of yeah. thing and uh getting to college in buffalo where i met like dan barnes and mm. the buffalo crew of people who are way better than i ever was uh, was kind of a, a big push in skating. Cause yeah, because you're from Nyack Ny- area, right? Yeah, so suffer in Rockland County. So Rockland I, I County. grew up, you know, 30, fi- 30 miles from Manhattan or something. Okay. You know, if, Is it like a little mm, suburban area? Yeah, or? Okay. like, you know, sort of general middle class suburb. Yeah. Uh, little Not tiny. like out in the sticks or anything like that? No, I mean, I wouldn't call it that. I mean, yeah. we had stores and... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had you know, lights. I just know, like, we upstate were, New York uh, has, like, the suburbs and then there's, like, the stakes bit. Right? Yeah, I'm but, trying to... I think it was second to last stop on, like, New Jersey Transit Line to Hoboken. Okay. okay. So you could get on that train and get to Hoboken in an hour. Oh, okay. And then to Manhattan in another, like, half an hour or something. That sounds pretty far. Damn. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking I want to live there. <laughs> yeah, I remember doing that a couple of times, you know, that sort of first adventure out in the city and my mom taking me into and my friends oh, from shit. high school. And then later writing instructions, for, you know, paper instructions. Or we didn't have cell phones, yeah, you know, yeah. GPS. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like you're going to go out there and get lost and actually be lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, had to have all the all the emergency contacts ran down the phone numbers yeah. and shit. Yeah, quarters for the payphone. Tra- yeah, 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 train yeah, yeah, schedule yeah. because I'm sure it stops running. At yeah, a yeah, time. yeah, yeah. So I didn't do that a lot. You know, New York City mm. seemed intimidating and. Far How old away. were you when you started going to the city? Uh, Fifteen, sixteen, maybe. Okay, mm-hmm. but I mean, started going to the city was like going like three times. Yeah, yeah. We didn't. It well, wasn't a regular thing. It was a mission, and it's I guess pretty crazy. Yeah, and uh, at the time of getting my license. You know, we had branched out around my area. You know, I was mm. close to like, yeah. Mawa, New Jersey, and met some other kids in those areas. So that you didn't, there wasn't a, dis- you found everything. Yeah, you didn't you need to. Yeah. You know, you all of a sudden opened up all these new spots yeah. that were within driving distance and mm. not sort of scary far away. Yeah. <laughs> and like, also like when you're not like, I've, I've realized, you know, I'm from here, but I've realized when you're not living here, like, dr- like driving into the city seems like a hassle or like going oh, into yeah. the city seems like a hassle. It's yeah. like there's traffic, there's yeah, yeah, all these things. It's, it's, yeah. like, it's like a pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? So especially why if would you, you just got your license. Or yeah. Something. Like, right. I can't, just, I remember actually going over the Tappan Zee bridge when I'd just gotten my license. Yeah. Like getting stuck, not knowing that I was doing that, and I didn't have any money for the toll, and like, <laughs> oh shit, it's just like this whole stress. <laughs> oh yeah, it's expensive like... too to drive into the city for yeah, the most yeah. part. I think you probably from Jersey at it least sucks. have to pay a toll for everything. Yeah, there were a couple. It... Every tunnel, every bridge you had to pay for. Yeah, it sucks. Lots of little things where it's like you know you grow up close to it and be like, oh man, you were like right in New York City, You're like yeah, <laughs> I mean, not really, no, but I wasn't. Yeah. And, well, especially when you're like, if you just got your license, you're like 16, 17, you can't afford like a ten dollar toll to go into the the city every time gas. or whatever it is. Dude, yeah, actually, I think it was like a dollar back then. 
Oh, really? I mean, yeah, inflation has changed a lot. A dollar? No, not a dollar. For the Tappan Zee Bridge. Oh, Tappan Zee. a dollar. But Tappan Zee, where does Tappan Zee? Yeah, goes... you didn't. You took. It was more George Washington. But... Yeah, you would, <clears throat> to get into the actual city part, you would need yeah. to do that. It's probably like three bucks. I don't know. Three bucks? No. But gas was like 99 cents, so, you know, you were wow. going oh, well, places. I mean, but still, it's all relative. When you're 16, no, I mean, to, it's, for it's $5 not, it's, to, fill, to put some gas in your tank not, is a lot not, of money. Not, not to put you out there, but it's, it was 19 years ago. He yeah. was kind of a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, but it, I'm not saying it's all relative to, even if it was a dollar a gallon, when you're 16 years old, you don't have like 15 bucks to fill your tank up. You still got to eat the whole day yeah, that's true. and Quite stuff that. like that. And, and, I don't and, think and, that math was quite right. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever's going on. Whatever. It was a while ago. <laughs> things were cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For sure. Remember paying for change. I remember like in Franco's car too, like scrounging up change to get like gas to go to like the next spot and stuff like that. Shit was real back then. That yeah. That's that's some real shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so so whatever. Then you went then you went to Buffalo. Buffalo. Met, met boys, yeah. Dan all Barnes. the Buffalo guys yep. who, you know, sort of took my skating to another level, I guess. Um, and just knowing, you know, being with, it's different skating with guys that are really good versus seeing it on a video. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, you have that session feeling. You, you know, work off each other right, and everything. Yeah. And then those guys introduced me to the Rochester guys uh, where, you know, it's been home for 11 years or so, 12 maybe. So I went to school in Buffalo, moved to Rochester afterwards. And, you know, became all the Rochester guys sort of became, you know, my core group of friends. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the Buffalo guys kind of fell off and had different priorities you know everybody grows up yeah and does different get, things um, get, you know whatever yeah get older you know <laughs> yeah. stuff life work damn what's up buffalo where you at <laughs> <laughs> there, you got I mean, called out buffalo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a group of guys that are like starting it back up you know like coming back from mm. not having skated for a long time that you know they'll have saturday sessions and stuff nice. so mm. come on dan barnes pull it together <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying he's gonna move back to buffalo or something. yeah i don't know if he's, yeah, he's in florida right now oh so. is he okay. yeah have you still not seen him no, we haven't run into each other yet. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> Damn, Barnes, step it up. But it's it's been a while, you know. Like realistically, like it's just been a while. Like our last Arizona trip or something. Oh yeah, probably. I mean, same thing. Like with it feels me. like a little bit of a different world. Because mm-hmm. how long did we go to Arizona together? <laughs> like, the last one was like 2011, maybe. Yeah, but we started with 2007. Maybe? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh, that just, was like the yearly yeah, winter we used to Arizona yeah, trip. Trips, like the yeah. Rochester crew. Oh, man. And me and Justin. Austin, Justin sometimes. Franco. And Neil. Neil. Yeah, Franco came once. Yeah. Neil. Yeah, Al. Neil, big Neil. <laughs> Al Delega came once. Oh, yeah. Gabe Holm came once. Yeah, he did. But then we have Justin Gary Murphy. Go, Justin used to go there? Yeah, yeah Gary Justin's Murphy. It. Yeah. I mean, those are really good trips. Really good trips. Adam Caracelli, too? Yep. We, yeah. yeah. Well, he was there when we lived there. I think that was the only time he came. Was it? Yeah. Okay. I, that's such a... It really does feel like a different time, you know? Hmm. Well, if you think about 2007, that's 12 10, years ago. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy to think about. <laughs> Right, that is crazy. But you're still kind of doing it, though. Like, where else have you, like, where where else have you, not gone yet? I guess since you've been on your hiatus from work that you wanted to go to. Um, you got six months left. Yeah, I don't know. I've got a <laughs> bunch of stuff planned. Like the the Europe thing was the big one. I mean, getting to do all that, like Rome, uh, Paris, where my mom and my boyfriend actually met me in Paris. Really? So, I didn't know. That's yeah, crazy. that was just really awesome. That's a cool way to end it too. So I got a little like a little luxury at the end of the trip, mm. and I also uh, met up with Kevin and skated Paris for like a, a couple hours. It started hailing. So Kevin, it, Kevin, yeah. I'm sorry, feel. Uh, Brinkman. Mm, sorry. Right. He From does. Uh, he made the adapt video. Oh, okay. Just, cool. Mm. Very cool. Um, I hope that's his last name. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not saying it right. I'm definitely yeah. getting yeah. <laughs> people confused sometimes, but. Uh, definitely the american way to say it <laughs> yeah that too but there were a couple cabins and i was like i couldn't think of his last name for sure oh, yeah. but he was awesome and like you know showed me around it was really and then there were a couple other like actual paris guys he was just visiting cool um, so that was fun that was somewhere where i'd want to go back like it, it felt more like new york to me than other parts of paris Europe. itself mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i mean well sort of silly i guess to go there and want it to feel like home yeah but Everywhere else felt more vacation-y in a mm-hmm. way. And Paris felt like it made a little more sense somehow. Like it, it felt just a little more, I, I feel like they'd be offended if I said more like the United States. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they it, don't want to hear that. It is easy to fit in Paris. I felt the same thing too when I was there. Yeah. Like it's I mean, easy to get, except for the language barrier. It's like easy to get around though. It's like everything's accessible. Yeah. And I, I did take French in high school. So I knew like three words. Yeah, just to get by. Just to get <laughs> yeah, I took French 15 years ago, so I know yeah, I, I how to build say hi, bye, and thank you. Like sentences in my head for like interacting <laughs> with people. And the second someone spoke to me, I'm like, 
Just the most, yeah, yeah. just the important yeah. things like <laughs> où est la toilette. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there were actually a couple of times where I was just like, hola. Because <laughs> like, I was in Barcelona hola. for like two weeks. But even like, if like you go kind of, me. It's, it's their, their accent and their pronunciation, pronunciate, pronunciation is so yeah. different. Like oh, yeah. that yeah. alone is its own skill. It has let its alone, own voice. Yeah, let alone Every knowing language. what the words actually are, how to say them yeah. or whatever. But it, it was a little humbling, you know, being yeah. in Europe and being like, I don't speak anything. Yeah. And well, it was like, your first experience like that, right? Because yeah. you said you never been to Europe before. And everyone there is bilingual, like yeah. every and single they're person. they're all catering to you <laughs> yeah. and like trying to mm. make sure that you like know what's going yeah. on, which is really awesome. But it's yeah. also like, oh man. You feel like such yeah. an idiot. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Like, I'm st- why am I a stupid American? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it was like, you had to get over that and just yeah. exist and have a good time. Mm-hmm. But there were times where you're just like, man, I'm just putting these people out that mm-hmm. are... Yeah. But, uh, but to, to, to be fair, all their countries are so close in different languages. They got to have mm. like a, a median language to communicate yeah. with one another. Yeah. Like our country is so yeah. big, ocean to ocean. And it's mm. like, yeah, we don't really have to, which is sad. It kind of feels like a different language, though, if you go into like the middle of the country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, go to New Orleans or something. Too, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. It feels like a different language. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so yeah, it's cool that your mom and your boyfriend came out and met you in Paris. Was so you were there for five days of the five, the three of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Just ate lots of good food. Did touristy stuff. Just like was Eiffel f- Tower, a whole thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you had the guys like selling the little keychains on like, yeah, the, the side. little light up keychains. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, the like splat balls. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you, with lights in them. Uh, did you see the kid yesterday? I want to go off topic. <laughs> the, the splat balls that could get hit in the face. <laughs> no. me. Oh my god! Did you even know that happened? No. You remember the kids playing like, splat ball? Yeah. Yeah. Just real quick. Uh, 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 maybe, like balls of slime. That maybe like, we'll go back. I'll talk about this. For, you like flatten it? Really? Yeah, like the, the gooey balls. But maybe we'll talk about this with Sean a little bit. But these kids were. We were skating at, the, at a basketball court, and it was the least, I'd describe as the least athletic kids you've ever seen in your life. Like five kids, they were like probably 13, 14, and I was like, Sean's gonna fucking jump in on this. <laughs> and they did not know how to play basketball at all. They would kept like fumbling and like tackling the ball. They would go for a shot every like five minutes. So they were so bad. And then they started throwing this goo ball around, and they were throwing them like across the, the, the basketball court. And one of the kids even threw it, and it somehow went behind him. He was so bad at throwing what? stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. Just let go too early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then the like, kid threw it to him, and he goes like this to hold, like to catch it. And I guess the sun or something must have been in his eye. And this goo ball hit him right in the face. And since it was gooey, it like splat across it. Like we, me and him saw it in slow motion. <laughs> it just splat and spread across his whole face. And he was like, Ugh. and me and Sean saw it, and we were fucking. I was crying like laughing. It was so funny, but I don't know. I, uh, random. I, I totally missed it. That's yeah, one of those things. You were skating, man. probably. Yeah. That's one of those things. Like, why hasn't that been filmed? Yeah, no. exactly. That's what I'm saying. And we, we were just watching them for like ten minutes. Like, I, I'm in awe of how unathletic and uncoordinated these kids were. It was just funny. I never seen like maybe one or two, but the whole group was like that. That's it was funny. it was really entertaining. That's why you gotta have the camera rolling the whole. All at, day. That's my group. Especially in New York. Especially in New York. Especially yeah. New York. in New York. In the see. summer in New York, just leave the camera on. Yeah. <laughs> just leave All it on. Times. And sh- yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much anything happens here. Yeah. It's uh that's my Google story for the day. That's okay. a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you didn't, you didn't even mean, know it, that that happened. Yeah. I don't know. I could have been on like hanging out with Leo or something. Yeah. I maybe mean, hanging out with Leo. <laughs> <laughs> the puppy, Uncle Leo. So you were saying before, like you went out like with your boyfriend and stuff like that. Um, and he lives in like Florida and you go visit him, I guess, and, and skate and all this stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So I've been kind of going between like when I'm not traveling, spending time down uh, in Delray, Florida. Yeah. It's like Rochester's like your home, but like not really. Yeah. Like, you're, just, you're not really there. Yeah. I think I've actually been in Rochester for maybe two weeks this year. Oh, shit. That okay. little. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going back uh, home for a couple of days tomorrow for my boyfriend's birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, cause he's, to Rochester? In, he's in Rochester right now doing some work stuff. Oh, okay. Um, like he he worked in Rochester and sort of that's okay. How that's met. how you met him. Okay, that makes uh, sense now. And so he travels back and forth a lot too. But uh, so it'll be a couple of days in Rochester, and then I'm gonna get back. Like initially, I was gonna drive straight from here, like south. But you know, that's it. I want to go celebrate with him. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and more driving. Yay. <laughs> it's not even that bad. You know, it's like five hours or something. But I'm also stopping at my mom's. Uh, she just moved. Well, she bought a new house and is moving. So. On my way here, I stopped at my mom's. She's like, hey, can you pack Help up all move? your stuff? No, <laughs> yeah. just like pack up anything that's left at my house. Oh, shit. You know, from childhood stuff and whatever. Like A nice know, relaxing I'd... visit. Yeah, a couple find hours. Finding gems? Uh, a bunch of like, you know, a ton of old daily breads. Like nice. Team Paradise catalogs. Ooh, like, Team Paradise. Uh, nice. You know, all the uh, the random like posters. I got a box that was yeah, sort yeah. of the, all the magazine pages I tore out and put on my wall as a kid. Mm-hmm. Damn, Damn, that's sick. sick. 
Um, it's good to find those things. Yeah, fiction, some fiction T-shirts. Ooh. Uh, the relics. Yeah, there's definitely like a, a nice little collection of random skate stuff. And then just other, I found like an old Game Boy with that. Remember like <laughs> Game Boy <laughs> Pocket or the Game Boy camera thing? Game Boy it was camera. like a cartridge that went in a oh, Game and Boy. It was like a webcam camera, yeah. right? I remember and that. There were pictures on it from like high school. <laughs> what? I was just like, holy shit. Like it was so weird <laughs> to see that. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Crazy. Um, so it was good, but I'm, I'm stopping there again on my way back to like actually take all the stuff because I was like, mm. I'm not going to put it in my truck and like leave it parked in New York city for a week. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's not good. I kind of got to go back and it, like it's a multi-purpose mm-hmm. trip and then I'll just start again. Maybe, you know, go a different route mm-hmm. down South this time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'll be home for a couple of days and then on the road for, I guess not quite a month. Um, and I think July, I'm actually going to stay home. <laughs> I have to be an adult. Mm-hmm. Like, I've yeah, been an adult. <laughs> I gotta do like some house maintenance. <laughs> like, okay. Oh shit. Oh yeah. Well, you have like tenants yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a house with two apartments, and I live in my garage. With yeah. My mini ramp. I just found that out recently too. I didn't know that Jeez, you you, don't, man, you didn't live in the actual life. house. Yeah. You so you have the the den. Is that what you call it? The den. Yeah. The den, and you live. I didn't know that you don't even live in the house. Yeah. You live in the den. <laughs> right. So, yeah. It was explain like explain that situation. So, I, I guess you know a couple of years into my job, I was like. You know, I'd like to buy a house and sort of the teenage dream was at a mini ramp somewhere. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. And since it's Rochester and we get winter, I figured, you know, if I can find a place that has a big garage or something that I could build a ramp in, you know, that was the dream. So I kind of also felt like I'm never going to find it. So it'd be okay. like I didn't have to buy a house or I didn't have to. I don't know. That was some of that, you know, be an adult thing mm-hmm. where you think you have a path you're kind of supposed to take. Mm-hmm. And I just figured I'd never find the right place. So you were looking for a house with a place that you could put an indoor yeah. mini, indoor mini yep. ramp, not even just a yard, right. straight up indoor. Okay. <laughs> so I thought my criteria were pretty crazy. Like, <laughs> you know what? It it's is. probably not going to come up. You're not going to have to deal with it. Like just, you're kind of doing it, but you're not yeah, really. Just keep mm. your eye open. If yeah. And like maybe like a month in of like seriously looking is like the perfect place came up. No. <laughs> and like it, it was two apartments in the house and it's a 2,400 square foot garage. Like, it, I mean, it's a building. That's Damn, awesome. like 2,400 square yeah. feet. Damn. So, you know, I just went through all the, the stuff to make that happen. And I was living in the house and renting, you know, one of the apartments. So I was like, this will help me mm-hmm. pay for stuff. And I kind of got to the point where I was like, maybe I'm not doing as well, you know, financially <laughs> as I thought I could handle this. Uh-huh. And so I I finished out part of the garage into an apartment like sort of a, a small studio apartment because mm-hmm. the garage has gas and electric and plumbing and stuff it mm-hmm. just didn't have you know it was a Rooms. garage mm-hmm. yeah so i just you know built in walls and like did everything as cheap as i could so it's like a comfortable kind of lofty space and rented out the other apartment so now i live in my garage and then i guess like a third of the garage is where i live half the garage is like a mini ramp and then there's another third that it can fit like three cars parked in it and there's what? like we have a rail you know like on the ground yeah 2400 feet is a, a lot yo it, that's some feet is a lot yeah, yeah. i thought you were living in like a little like room small like half the size of this <laughs> with like and then like you have to crawl out and you're on top of like the quarter pipe you know or something like that <laughs> i mean my closet is underneath the ramp <laughs> yeah yeah okay so but it is kind of like it's that. like 2400 square feet is huge it's bigger than huge. most houses yeah. Yeah, yeah the living space is like my, five or six hundred square feet so it's not my kind of my whole house high. is like 800 yeah my but, whole yeah this is, yeah, this is like 700 or something like that yeah i mean the many ramp is it's 24 feet wide five feet tall with like a tight transition and it's five legit feet tall that's so it's a legit sick. mini ramp too <laughs> yeah that's not what you yeah. think for like a garage mini ramp you think like a three footer yeah something yeah like no that. he has yeah. like a legit ass mini yeah ramp. I, al delega came and helped build it so you're like oh yeah. really like it's overbuilt you know like it's, it's sturdy overbuilt. and yeah like the transition's right like I, I knew i needed some help and like he drove out with china I'm like, do you need any type of like permit for that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna talk about that. Yeah. Just in case. Sweep that under the. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say none. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, so we've got that, and then you know, a rail bolted in the ground, you know, like a skate park rail. Mm-hmm. Sick. Like Tim, Tim Adams welded it for us. Oh shit! Damn. Oh, you so. can't even move that thing. Uh, it's, it was bolted to the ground, so you can take it out. Oh okay. You know, like it's just put studs in the ground. Mm-hmm. Damn. Whenever you're, uh, whenever you're done with your your mission. I'm, I mean, Austin's I'm, been I'm, trying to come. I've been trying to come for years. Yeah, like, 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 like we're to find a weekend. Ourselves up. Yeah, to find a weekend to like drive to Rochester in the middle of the winter is like it just never happens for some yeah, reason. But like yeah. people's schedules and shit like that. But like, yeah, like 
since you built it, I'm like, yo, let's go, let's go. That's sick. And we just never worked out ever. Maybe this winter. Yeah. I, <laughs> maybe this winter. Maybe I'll be home. <laughs> Has anything like, obviously your mini ramp skills are probably incredible now. Was they are. I mean, not probably. They are. Because <laughs> I see it in mini ramp with you. But like, do you just wake up and like, oh, I was skate the mini and just like skate uh, the mini for breakfast? <laughs> I, I did more, you know, like it, it's been, I think like four or five years of having that. Mm-hmm. And when it was, you know, sort of newer, I did that a lot more often. It's just, uh, you know, in the summer we're street skating and, mm-hmm. And kind of being outside and in the winter it's like i have just a sort of simple gas heater that like takes 45 minutes to heat the place to like 50 mm-hmm. so <laughs> 50, yeah. it, it's sort of like a, a bit of a hassle and you you kind of like i'm like oh, do uh, i really yeah. want to like wait like yeah. i only have like an hour to skate right um so i'd love to say i skate it all the time still mm-hmm. but just not as much as i used to mm-hmm. uh, maybe if i was home more like, so oh, my big oh. my big question to you is is having a mini ramp at your house all that it's cracked up to be? That's since the big you, question. Since you were like a 10 year old kid or whatever. Yes, yeah, that's the big question everyone wants to know. I don't know. It's still kind of surreal, like walking in there and be like, <laughs> Is that the first thing you see? Like when you walk in, pretty much? No, it's kind of in the back. Okay. Like, so it's in the back. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to walk past like the door to my apartment. And then, like, you know, I park my cars in there. So you walk past the cars and it's half of it's hidden behind the park. Yeah. That's my apartment. Mm. So you don't. Your house is a skate park. Yeah. Does it bother the te- does it bother the tenants? No. So Tim Adams lives upstairs. Okay. Okay. And, that's, that's uh, oh, Tim lives there. I didn't yeah, know that. Tim lives there. Oh, there. He's like, like yer, tip, yer, yer. Yeah, you, yeah, you want a session? <laughs> you can't hear it from you know yeah, yeah. inside there. Oh. And uh, Nick and his girlfriend Leah, like they they're sort of they're friends through like other skating friends. So oh, and so you know them all. Yeah, everybody knew the that's deal. Awesome. You know, when there's the driveway full of cars, like mm-hmm. you kind of know. It's like yeah, yeah, it's just people skating. Um, I don't know. Tim lives in your place. Yeah. So Steve. Bruning lived upstairs for a while, mm-hmm. and then Tim moved in when Steve moved out. Okay. Uh, so we've had a, a rollerblader in there the mm-hmm. whole time, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, but yeah, I, I guess my thing, with, like, we don't skate it as much as I would like. I guess, well, in know. like the summer, I wouldn't imagine you would even skate it that much. Yeah, we right? don't. And it's not, it's sort of just, I, I mean, I would always skate mini ramp, so it's also mm-hmm. sort of my fault for maybe wanting more <laughs> mm-hmm. than, than you would normal people would want to skate <laughs> no, mini ramps are good i can skate mini ramps like one of the things that you could skate pretty much as long as you can physically skate yeah like jumping right. on ledges will be tougher on your knees like the mini ramp the transitions are all smooth and they're easier on your body yeah, i'm not even gonna front at this stage and at, at this age my, my mini's like my favorite thing to skate i've always loved it is mini. my number one yeah. that's i mean street is always has a special so much place you can do but we, it's just like, yeah, yeah you could just i don't know when you have a good session going like it's everyone's doing their lines and shit like 10 like 10 tricks in a row like just, oh 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 like it's just it's my favorite thing up. to do on mini you just drop in backside mm-hmm. and go in fish brain stall that's it <laughs> that's it so good like, that, that, is that is so a fun one. good yeah, yeah. And but then, i think it's more i feel like skating's changed a little where we don't session as much mm-hmm. you know you go out mm-hmm. street skating and it's maybe getting clips or on a specific mission mm. and you know a mini ramp is always a session yeah, yeah. that's true that's and why that sort of fun. brings it back to yeah. maybe your younger days where you were just at a spot and everybody's totally. going nuts and that's mm. what mini ramp feels like to me at least that's a good mm. point that's a um, good point mm-hmm. so the best yeah. is you know you get a you know well for a while we we're having sort of once a week like tuesday night sessions or something and you know you get five or six guys there and just skate have some beer music playing like just mm-hmm. that's the best part the vibes yeah yeah um is it so. still fun year after year yeah, I mean, Same I haven't shit. gotten tired of it. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and like you were saying, like everyone could go in on it because, like you know, there's only a certain amount of people that are going on like on a down rail maybe right. nowadays, mm-hmm. and and some people be excluded. But it's just like a thing where everyone's just like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I think we've all gotten feeding off each other's yeah vibes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, true. And that we've gotten older and kind of you know anybody like in Rochester, it's like you know sort of open invite more often than not. You mm-hmm. know, and it doesn't matter if you're good at it or not you just mm. come and pump around or something yeah and it's just cool to see people wanting to do something and try like yeah. i think all of you know there was a time where you know you wouldn't skate with somebody because they weren't good mm. and i think a lot of us now it's more often you're just like don't care you yeah. skate mm. you're into it you're a nice person right like that's come that, and hang that's out that's the requirements now yeah do like skateboarders or anything in rochester hit you up to skate it they're like no. yo i heard this rollerblade has got a mini ramp in his house let's hit him up it happened a little bit in the beginning, you know, some friends of friends. Because word gets around about things like that. Yeah. So the first time some skateboarders actually came over, we had a barbecue and they're friends of a 
friends and they skated and they actually we I had a grind box in there at that point and they actually broke the grind box oh shit no. and then just left didn't say anything damn and so like that was a little bit That's sour disrespectful. I had to, had to throw the hammer down That's disrespectful that. but it, it wasn't I don't, I don't think we knew them that like or I didn't know them that well but some other guys did and then it you know when when my friends got hit up like yeah so and so wants to come this game like okay um have them reach out to me yeah you know, i was like mm-hmm. i'm on facebook like give them my phone number whatever yeah. like yeah i would just as long as they can reach out to me as a person and sort of be respectful about like it's my house yeah you yeah know? and no one has done that <laughs> wow like i just Crazy. you know that's where like i want to at least talk to you on a personal level first yeah. so you understand yeah, that this is my house and like if your skateboard goes flying through my windshield of my car that's parked in the oh, garage, yeah, like, sure. yeah, I think about that. Yeah. yeah, like just that kind of thing where I think yeah. if you were just like, oh yeah, anybody that wants to come over, it's a different, yeah, a different vibe. Also, there's liability as well because yeah. like, you know some, someone someone so, comes yeah. over, cracks their head open, like and yeah. they're a jerk. As a kid, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah. well, it's an adult I mean, too, yeah, man. Yeah. If, if yeah. they're a jerk, you know, yeah. I don't know. But they also may not have a choice if they get hauled out in an ambulance and the health insurance company knows. Yeah, exactly. then you have a mini ramp <laughs> exactly. in your in your house. So yeah, yeah. Um, Strictly homies make sense. Mm. But it's but that too, if somebody is actually you know sort of talks to me like a person and not just some. You know, not a mini ramp. They're like, yeah. oh, mini ramp guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mini ramp guy. The dude <laughs> with the mini. Yeah, <laughs> mini ramp grant. <laughs> if they want to like be respectful, I've been open to it, but nobody's followed through with that. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> right, I gotta piss real quick. Okay, right. <laughs> it's like I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, you're supposed to do this before the episode. I know. I never had this problem. So. Okay, so uh, I think I'll take this one because uh, Austin was telling me there's something you wanted to talk about on the show. Yeah, and. Um, you were talking about your boyfriend. I, you're gay, right? Yes. Okay. And so you wanted to talk about like homophobia in blading. Yeah. And, t- and touch on that. And that's something obviously like I haven't really like thought of or even seen the same way that you have as a straight dude. Yeah. So um, go ahead if you want to <laughs> touch on that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely want to talk about it. It's just, it's one of the things I was actually. I hope just... I'm not putting you on the spot here. No, because I, I did want to talk about it okay. and I appreciate like, because I was like, oh, how do I bring that up in a like not a weirdo way right (laughs) like of where i'm just out of nowhere like out of context but um i was kind of talking to sean just before about it i was Mm -hmm. like it's hard to talk about because i don't have the same perspective now that i had when i was younger you know i was younger like the world was a less open place Mm -hmm. i grew up in a you know a little town where like i didn't know anybody who was openly gay Mm -hmm. there weren't like role models and things on tv and the media there was stereotypes you know things that you couldn't relate to as someone trying to figure out your sexuality as a teenager and you're just like i'm not that and i'm not that like i don't know what so back then i think i was more aware of it and people weren't as open i mean that that was the time where you know everybody was using derogatory terms for everything Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know it was just everything bad was gay and you know people would call everybody like you know, F word. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just, that was sort of normal language. And I mean, you get that, like people aren't necessarily terrible homophobic people using mm-hmm. that language. It was just normalized. But yeah, yeah, back then that's, that's what you did. So earlier, you know, in my life of coming to terms with my own sexuality and just like figuring out what that meant, it was worse, you know, it was hard, but like now, I, you know, people are so much more open, you know, it's easy to find sort of normal examples of, of someone, you know, in the media being portrayed that i was like oh yeah i relate with that i'm i'm gay but like i'm not a certain kind of gay or like a i don't know like a stereotype like Mm -hmm. i'm just a person you're your own individual it's just part of who i am it doesn't define me you know people don't always know i I guess how you think of it yourself and it was hard i think 20s more where i think rollerblading had a little bit of a like I feel silly like using how uh, word to use like hyper masculine thing where well, I had a point to prove. Uh, yeah. Thing, because yeah. skateboarding tried to tear it yeah. down and their main fight was man, roller being so gay. Yeah. Like look at oh, those yeah, stupid yeah. fruit yeah. booters. Like yeah. right. that was their big thing against us. And you had all these, you know, teenagers, like, early 20, like guys trying to be like, no, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, you know, I'm like, well, I, I guess I am, but like I'm not, and I got to fit in. So you, you learn how to, like tailor your language to the people around you. Hmm. Like, you know, I would not, if I was, you know, going on a date or like whatever, you just like, use really like generic terminology when you're talking to your friends. Cause you just don't know who hmm. is okay with it. Who's open. You're always kind of judging your surroundings and, and 
unfortunately judging people based on it because it you know somebody who is calling things gay and saying derogatory things like whether or not they mean it i'm gonna be like oh well maybe they wouldn't be that open to it is it really worth my trouble like you have the like, the opportunity to come out all the time mm -hmm. i mean just in any random circumstance where i'm sort of potentially put on the spot where it's like you know even earlier talking where it's like you know i met my boyfriend somewhere You're like mm -hmm. right i could just have, like bringing that up casually that you have to be aware of who you're yeah, in, yeah i mean i don't think it's as it's certainly not as bad as it used to be and there's a lot of people that just say you know just who cares just be yourself and don't worry yeah. about it but you know my entire sort of figuring out that part of my identity was caring and was being aware of the world around me and the bad things that were happening to people who were open about it i mean you know i couldn't even get married until like yeah, 2015 true. yeah mm. so you kind of want to adopt that don't care i'll just be myself but you know I've it's been, always in the back of your head kind of thing. yeah i mean i've been yelled at you know walking down the street holding hands with a you know a man <laughs> yeah like you know people yelling me out of the car like it hasn't happened in a long time but it's still those things stick with you whether or not it was serious and you know you know that there's a lot worse things going on in the world and i certainly don't like this i feel like it's about my experience not something political or like mm. bigger because there's all sorts of other terrible things happening to other people but um the skating part it just it made it hard at first because it was like all these guys have this thing to prove and they're like gay this gay that like yeah um and it made it hard to be myself for a while and then you know you just get to a point like skating also helped too like it it gave me something to be part of it gave me something to be confident about like i actually I think it sounds funny, but like the girl pants trend, like oh yeah, that sort of gave me a reason to be able to care about my appearance. Like I always kind of tried to avoid those things. Where like, were you doing the sweatpants before that? I had, no, I just you didn't do that. You skipped that. I had one <laughs> yeah. pair of sweatpants. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. We all we yeah, all, one of the few. We all look back at our past like, oh my god, I wish I could have redone that section <laughs> dressed normally. <laughs> I mean, I also did the like. Remember the super under oversized undershirt thing. Oh, oversized like, undershirt <laughs> the like sleeves yeah <laughs> yeah i did that okay and like big pants right. too but there was some of that so where you have like, some some shame with us yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i definitely didn't have because healthy shame <laughs> a little of that was like trying to avoid uh, you know the stereotypical this is what makes you gay like caring right. about your appearance like mm. sort of being well put together kind of thing where i was like well i don't want anybody to guess so you're like hyper aware of it mm -hmm. there's like nobody in would think that mm -hmm. but in your mind it's all built up and it's all this kind of turmoil of things like i remember you know coming the first time i came out to somebody i was like so scared and nervous ever and, how, how old are you yeah. because I'm, I'm curious uh the 18 or 19 18, 19. yeah um and i hope you don't mind if i ask candidly because i'm genuinely you know? curious but like did you know from an early age or i knew something was different you know, I, I knew that the things my friends were talking about and were interested in, you know, sort of sexually and girls and things, I was like, I don't quite get it. You know, the, the way they'd say things or mm -hmm. look at girls and women, I was mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know. I'm not quite sure I know what you're talking yeah. about, but not having any example, I'd sort of be like, I guess that's what I like to maybe. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, sort of you try to fit in. And then, you know, it got more apparent to me that I was like, it's just isn't what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up and sort of experienced more life, it's like, Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this makes sense now. So I think a point, I guess I like to make in conversation. Sometimes it's like people, you know, ask or like people act like it's choice somehow. And it's like, you know, when did you choose to be straight? Mm -hmm. Like, do you ever remember making a conscious choice? Right, it's yeah. like, that's just not how it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's more, how you express it and if you're in a place of you know people that are open and comfortable i mean you know my mom was incredibly supportive um, i've had supportive people around me since i started coming out i mean and beforehand too where it made it comfortable enough to talk to people and be like hey this is just part of my life and i don't want to hide it anymore and yeah. i don't want to feel like because you kind of feel like the people you care about you're you're letting down a little bit like it, it puts you in this mm. like i'm lying to you a little bit mm -hmm. And like it's like oh you feel you know, guilty about it maybe? yeah like where'd you go last night I'm like 
really say, oh, I had a date. And it's like, you're just like, oh, you know. Just hanging out with a friend or something. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you're lying to your friends. And then also you're downplaying maybe like a romantic interest in your life. Mm-hmm. It's not fair to that person either. Yeah. yeah. Like, so it's just True. a... It's you a know, tough, a journey yeah. of it. And then, you know, people you don't know that well, it goes, unfortunately, it felt like you're making judgments where I'm like, is this person worth it to me? Like, what interactions are we going to have? Do I need to, like, f- worry about it? Because if you just turn it off and are like, yeah, I just won't right now. Yeah. You just kind of let it go. But then you're thinking of people and you're like, oh, man, but like, I like that person. They were nice. Like, I want to be like open about my life. Yeah. It kind of sounds like something in the way, but like, between like, if you... Don't talk about it, yeah. like in the barrier, because you're not exposing like who you are to. Yeah, you know, and like, you don't give them or... that opportunity. Like, it's yeah. not fair of me to like take the opportunity for you to be a nice person away. <laughs> yeah, like just assuming, hey, you're, this guy's gonna be a dick if I yeah. say something. But so you used to second guess yourself a lot. Do you still feel that way at all? Uh, yeah. I mean, it happened like way less. I mean, I think like I've stopped. I guess feeling like I should apologize for it in some way. Like it's not that I think you should I should, apologize for it. Not that I'm gay, but just that like, I don't know that I'm not being open about it or something. Like I felt like that was sort of bad not to be open, but now I'm just like, I, this is me. This is my, but you're life. not entitled to like, like, hi, I'm Grant. And this is, you know, <laughs> well, right. That's the thing either. I don't want it to be like the defining factor of like, I'd be like, Oh, there's Grant, that gay rollerblader guy. <laughs> like that's not the defining yeah. part of right. my person, but it's important to it. Like, just like, yeah, any straight person like you know it's your normal life like you don't think twice about talking about your girlfriend or Mm -hmm. like mentioning you know somebody like a hot woman walking down the street or just Mm -hmm. like experiences you've had that are heterosexual that are just normal right like it's it's nothing you hide it's nothing it's all around us all the time for you guys like i was telling i forgot uh, maybe a couple people just because it was it felt funny to me that it still hit me like I, I went to san francisco recently and getting off the plane like delta had ads that had obviously gay young men and i was just like like in sort of normal like it wasn't campy or stereotypical it was just i was like i haven't seen that before yeah. like i've seen you know stuff on tv now is way more yeah open the conversations but, being had more in the past few years but it was just me. a simple like little billboard thing Right. And it, I was just like, oh, that's what it feels like. Just for a second, I was like, that's what it feels like for everyone else just to see all these things they relate to all the time. Like, and it, it probably felt cool. Wow. Yeah, it did. I never, never thought about it that way. Because that's what you see. You know, the billboard is a man and a woman or like a... Like, right. I don't yeah. know, just stuff where... You, when you see a commercial, it's like the typical family. It's like the man, the woman, the kid, whatever. You just feel outside of it all probably. Yeah, you're yeah. always... A, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was a recent thing. I was just like, oh cool that and then cool. I, I moved on but <laughs> uh obviously not because i still thought about it. but like i think that was a way i thought of as like relating it to other people that maybe didn't have that experience like your world's all around you when you're sort of not other i guess yeah. you know and um lots of people have the experience like i do for other reasons but uh, even just you know no matter your like race or whatever like being straight i think is something you not necessarily take for granted, but it's just your world is around you. No, I, I, I know what you're saying, and I think I, I, I think I know what you're saying, and like how you were trying to explain like uh, how your game, but it doesn't define like everything who you are. Like it's not like when I'm walking down, it's like oh, that's that straight guy. Like you know, it's just kind of t- you yeah. take it for granted. People like associate you with other things, and then if you're gay, like that might be like the main thing they associate with you versus like all these other things that make up who you are. Is right. that kind of what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, in a way. Um, I had like notes too that I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, also you were just talking about how scared you were to, to come out for the first time. And I kind of interrupted you by asking. Yeah, well, I was just yeah. saying like part of the problem, I think for me is like you build it up, mm-hmm. you know, it's something you're nervous about, something you're worried about, regardless of what it is, you know, you, you build it up way high. And then sometimes the actual outcome is just kind of whatever, you know, like mm-hmm. I remember the first time I came out, it was just sort of like, oh, cool. You know, and it's like a you little bit. You built it up more than like. Yeah. And obviously, if you trust someone to tell them, then yeah, obviously, they're, they're yeah, probably yeah, going yeah. to... Right. Your be judgment's accepted. probably going to be good. Yeah, yeah I'm trying here. to actually remember right. It was a skating... Fr- it was either, like, my friend Kevin or Mike. Like, Mike Torres. Like, mm-hmm. And I can't remember which, like, came first. Like, it was, like, kind of, you know, close together kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it was just sort of like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, it's like okay, so what Thanks now? for telling me kind of thing. Like, yeah. yeah. I remember Mike being just, you know, super supportive. And, like, I mean, it's Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but... Has the re- has like the rest of like 
blading community, I guess, like people that you run into when you travel, like feel the same way now or I don't, I mean, it doesn't come up that often. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I guess I generally, I, in my mind, I try to just assume people know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I've been open about it. I'll be real. I didn't know until like, just like not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, which so. also I think that's the reality because for a lot of people, yeah. like, it doesn't really matter. No, you know, it's not something yeah. that you're, like, a news bulletin. Right, for. It's right. Like, yeah. It's exactly. just it's this person that, that happens to be part of their life. Yeah. And like you said, it's 2019. Like, it's uh, people are so much more open with it. I feel like, at least in, in the bigger cities and places, like, everyone has friends who or knows, of, yeah. you know, or interacts, works, like, you know. Yeah, because I think that there was a time where it was easier... To not know someone, yeah, you know, to and to either you did and they were hiding it, or you just didn't, yeah. So, just, I mean, but yeah, you're in New York and it's a bigger place, and yeah, I'm sure it's different in other places where you are, but well, yeah, even in New York, I'm sure people don't they have they have people that, that aren't, but I'm just saying, I think it's more like you said, like people are more open. It's more, it's a different time where it's it, the conversations being had more, and people are at least hopefully feeling more comfortable with, yeah, yeah seems like that yeah it definitely and, is definitely is and we're getting we're all getting older and more mature right yeah and that's other. another thing too when you're a kid it's like kind of like part of the bullying thing maybe and like I, he said yeah. people were yeah. using a derogatory term yeah. like oh you're gay whatever this and that well kids are assholes yeah like, oh, exactly by, what by it is nature like, exactly generally. what it is when you're older you know who gives a fuck yeah yeah so. and that, i mean that i guess the point of sort of the rollerblading thing like with is just i don't know be careful with your words you know that there are always people listening yeah. and kind of paying attention to their environment and I, I think since you know tim adams posted a big thing coming out a couple yeah. of years ago and yeah. that, i think that opened up a lot of conversation for people mm. um and tim's a really really great guy like yeah. if, if you don't like tim then <laughs> yeah exactly you're <laughs> yeah. the jerk yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah um you know and and you know other people sort of get wind of that and you know i've talked to people over the years that are just like hey me too you know thanks like can we share experience kind of thing and mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's certainly a, certainly a lot more openly gay rollerbladers that I know now than, you know, five years ago. Yeah. Um, whether or not, you know, they're advertising it. Like, I, you know, it's like, you sort of feel like I'm not advertising it. Yeah. But I'm also not going to hide it either. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, in this case where it's kind of, this is bringing me back a little bit to like being like nervous about it just because it's a wider audience and not necessarily because I think people are going to be jerks. It's just like you, it sticks with you. Yeah. You know, but you were saying like, like it's, it's you're open about it now anyway like you don't even think of it that way yeah doing something like this shouldn't really be any different i well, guess well I, I certainly think it takes courage to to sit and candidly talk yeah, about it yeah, in, yeah. in a platform where people are going to have their opinions and say things yeah but um i i also think that i yeah like i think it's important for you to have wanted to talk about it and um because it's going to embolden someone who may have yeah, felt, exactly. felt yeah, like yeah. the way that yep. you felt like mm -hmm. where you were like, ah, I don't feel like I can talk to it. I don't see anyone I can relate to. Right. And for like those people like who are like, oh, well, okay. I, it's, I, yeah, it's, it's cool. Like, yeah. and, and maybe I can. So, yeah. Yeah. That was definitely some of the hope of just, you know, don't have to be a role model, but like, yeah, you said if somebody yeah. feels a little more comfortable with themselves, mm -hmm. that that's really awesome. And, you know, I've had that over the years, like the, it's just, I guess, how it works. You know, yeah. the more people that you can relate to, the the better you can feel, and just life experience too. Like the more people that you run mm -hmm. into that are positive about it, or just don't care. You know, at this yeah. point, I'm like, it's cool that you don't care because it doesn't need to be a thing. Yeah, but right. Yeah, it's still hard to get out of old habits where you're wondering you're right. if you're, you know, just the, I don't know, you're standing in line for a sandwich or something, and somebody strikes up conversation. It's like there are multiple opportunities to be like to come out you right. know to, to say something about the person you're with you know if, mm -hmm. if i'm walking somewhere with my boyfriend and mm -hmm. you know puts his arm around me or like you do something like that it's like you're still like a little bit is this a time is yeah. this the place and i think a lot of that is self-imposed but it's it's from you know history and but i'm sure a lot of it's justified too for sure mm -hmm. yeah right. you just yeah. don't know like yeah. I, I was driving. like you said you'd be getting like people shouting out of the car down the street or yeah um and just other you know you see it around you you still see you know maybe sort of uh, bro college guys or something like oh, out yeah. in a bar that are like over masculine guys like yeah. yeah or just people that are you know they're not they certainly, I, I like to th give people the benefit of doubt where they're not 
actually homophobic, but just bad you know, habit in their language, maybe. Yeah, and mm-hmm. in sometimes their actions. You know, people the attempt to make someone feel uncomfortable, like yeah. your male friends, where you know you're like you see them trying to make each other uncomfortable with like contact or mm-hmm. oh yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, flirting get kind of stuff mm-hmm. where it's like so you are kind of implying that this is a bad thing mm-hmm. like yeah it's sort of funny and you don't mean mm-hmm. anything really by it but when you don't know those people or you don't know them that well it's one of those it's like yeah but do you actually not think that's bad mm-hmm. or are you making a point to be like don't be gay dude yeah yeah like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah um there's totally like a lot of bad habits stuff and and i i you know say Myself, I'm still like learning a lot of this stuff. I was definitely like, you know, uh, a blader that's like, oh, that's gay or stuff like I that. Mean, I did and, it and, too. And, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I won't say I'm above it, and uh, but there's definitely, like you said, like being conscious of like your words and the impact. Like I've, I'm like learning, like even in this conversation, and like uh, just what's important, like uh, just that it's important and then how it affects people. And I think that's yeah, it's super important, man. To yeah. convey what, that message because yeah one of my boys who skates in jersey he's always like he's openly gay and everything but he's like he'll, he'll always i'll be like nah i don't want to get mcdonald's i like mcdonald's like you know mcdonald's what are you gay but he's like he just has it like a joke just joking around like it's yeah. just having like making like lighthearted about right. it you know yeah i mean i i do that too like it's it's not like uh i don't know i'm guilty as well sometimes and yeah it depends you know i think like everybody has a different perspective who you're comfortable on, with too i guess like yeah and perspective on language i mean mm-hmm. i try to be conscientious but you can't always be like you can just do your best and yeah. like you said learn i mean we're all learning all the mm-hmm. time and as long as you're kind of moving forward yeah make the attempt uh, like, yeah, yeah right it's, it's hard to remain upset at someone who it seems to be making progress or acknowledging that they've done something and sort of be like oh man i didn't realize that like yeah. now i do i'm gonna be better uh, yeah so so uh, from my po- point as a straight guy i would just say like t- to your point uh members of the community just have patience <laughs> have patience with us straight you know dudes just because i think everyone is a lot of people don't have malicious intent and they're like yeah trying to learn and trying to make the effort mm. and open to it and i think like, people are part of our community anyway you usually we're pretty open I think so too. I, th- I think Bladers, everyone, that everyone, because, everyone's because so Bladers diverse. Because Bladers normally so hated on at least his. Well, I don't know about it anymore. I think yeah. that might be changing too. But like We've in the history of Blading, anyway. they've been like the yeah. heel of the action sports, and so like I think because of that, I would hope that a lot of people would be uh, compassionate to people who are in right. that situation in other areas. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. I have found I've I feel like that's true, uh, but I've also thought it's funny that how, even though that's true, you know, we have everybody from all walks of life and we're a sort of smaller tight knit like creative community it's still there's there's some of that stuck masculinity thing i it's got to be from the whole <laughs> skateboard thing i guess you know like i i that I, was I, a, I, I think i think i remember that maybe. being a big deal where people totally, were really offended by it and it's like you had to prove yourself oh mm. man i remember just going to the skate park with, that was filled with skateboarders and like putting my skates on skating so fast just doing royale just mm. like poking my chest out like yeah. trying like to like be uh, alpha ish, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Just because because of the stigma, like you know what I mean. That uh, yeah, it was just like oh, that's that's well, they use gay or uh, fruit fruit boot, but I think now it's changed to like because because I think even their community is becoming more conscientious of these yeah, words and stuff like that. Sure. So, so they just say kook or lame mm-hmm. thing now. So I, I think it's these other uh, other critiques that mm-hmm. that come out of it. But what I, I even think that's changing too. So yeah, I, 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 think so I wouldn't want to. Well. Hang up, hang up on that. Yeah, and I like. I guess it, I don't mean to harp on skateboard. No, like, there's yeah. so no, many no, no, things but, that. Have, but I think that's where it derives from, or at least started. Yeah, because you, you get that chip on your shoulder. Yeah. If, if you're mm-hmm. in your 30s, like you remember those times mm-hmm. for sure. And I think also, regardless of your sexuality as a teenager, you're just you know hyper aware of stuff, and it's yeah. like you know don't get at me for this. Like I'm going to prove you way wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, Your identity matters a lot at that age, like versus, and like for me, like, you know, high, especially high school and all these years are like, you feel like you being judged is so important. Now, right. now I'm yeah, like, yeah. now I'm like, <laughs> now you don't care. Now I'm like, I got my partner, point. I got my dogs, I yeah. got to go to work. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks exactly. about me. Yeah. I got work, man. I got to pay the The shit that really matters in life about like, yeah, if you're yeah. cool or not. Yeah. But I think that's, what's making rollerblading even better now. You know, we have so many of us that are older, that are kind of reestablishing what it is, mm-hmm. you know, with that maturity and 
understanding of the world around us where when everybody was when role building was started you know we have our 13 year old pros yeah <laughs> they're like yeah. how are they going to kind of lead by example and the people that earn it now. Right. How is Randy Spicer going to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, guys, don't say mean stuff. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys, be rad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so, yeah, it's it's uh, definitely the maturity level of, like, the, the community now could definitely be used for some some good. And, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just... I don't know. I'm sure I could... I know I've forgotten stuff that I definitely wanted to mention. Or, well, yeah. if, if, if you want, you could... Do you have your notes, Andy? Yeah. Yeah. T- take well, a, take a, a peek good, in actually. your notes, and and, and, and and while you're taking a peek at yeah, your if notes, has any questions. we're gonna ask the people who are watching live with us right now if they have any questions for Grant. Please start putting, line them up, putting them forward. So when we get to the guest part of the, we're com- getting a lot of love in the in the group chat, uh, Grant. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I also just want to say, man, thanks for for opening up because you know it's I, I think it's something that takes some courage, and I think it's something that's like really important just to speak about. So just want to thank you for having the. Uh, <laughs> the courage to the gusto as they say to uh, to speak on it man because uh, i actually did pretty well with my notes <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you yeah i there was a couple i impress just... myself sometimes <laughs> <laughs> but there's still you know it always feels like there's more to say or yeah. something to yeah. touch on but mm. you know you could i could struggle with it and sort of string together some more sentences but i just i don't know i i really appreciate you know having the opportunity to even speak about it at all and that you know that this you know your podcast reaches so many so much of our community that like you said i hope there's some people that can gain some normalcy from just being like oh hey he's like a normal dude who's good at rollerblading and Mm -hmm. like he's gay yeah so well along the lines of that amanda lethal asks what can we do as a community to make sure we're openly accepting of others i yeah i mean I guess just like be open, you know, pay attention to the people around you, listen to their conversations, um, be supportive. You know, if, if you feel like somebody might be, I don't know, just kind of mention something like, it's so hard to say cause it's different for everyone. Like yeah. I, I remember not wanting to be like when I came out to my mom, she was like, and you know, I had an idea, you know, I thought maybe you were, but I didn't know how to talk to you about it. I feel like moms always know first. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They I mean, just, they kind of should. Yeah. To yeah. Mom. I, I so. feel like everyone who I know who said they come up to the mom, their mom's like, I had it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. We're good. <laughs> but in that instance, I was like, I'm glad you didn't because if you'd brought it up when I wasn't ready to, it may have it set me back. You, you know, yeah. I might've been like, no, I'm not. Mm. Yeah. And then it would have been a whole nother level of stuff or another layer mm. So it's it's hard yeah, to it's say true. about being, it's, it's it's like you don't want to say like oh what, did you say your boyfriend like are you gay you know you don't yeah. want to like call somebody out mm-hmm. on it but if it comes up you know you want to just make them feel like it's normal totally but also it being normal is sometimes not making a thing about yeah it. just let them do <laughs> um, their but yeah just they're... trying to be open and and understanding and you know careful of your language if if you feel like somebody seems maybe like they're kind of hanging back from things or not Mm. really being involved. Like that's what I did for a long time. You know, I'd kind of keep myself on the outskirts of things so that I wasn't presented with the possibility of dealing with it. You know, if you kind of hang out, you kind of like Arizona trips, like, Mm. you know, I wouldn't really go out with you guys. Yeah. You always always stay by. I kind of do my own thing. I used to use your ID. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it is so oh, I used to use your ID to not drink. <laughs> well, I used to drink at the time, probably. Yeah. Um, Austin used to drink means he had one beer when he went. <laughs> we, I, I took his ID. I guess for some reason we used to go to Hooter for some reason out there. I, I don't even know if I was drinking or not, but I took your ID one time, and of course we don't look alike really. Yeah. And they were like, "The leader is a question again." She like, and obviously he has like blue eyes and stuff. And says, <laughs> says your eyes BL blue. And I'm like, no, I mean, it's black. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. Yeah. And then she's like, okay, fine. That's good. Yeah. By the way. I was like, no, I mean, it's black. And you're just, and like, I'm looking at James Johnson, like, <laughs> and as Grant's ID. That's yeah, great. Funny. That's really lovely. Sorry to interrupt that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. But it, like, that's the kind of thing, at least for me, where I wouldn't involve myself as much as I'd really want to be. Cause it, it's kind of reducing the amount of time I'd have to be like vulnerable. You know, like a kind of, it's like a, a little it's like, cause like, I guess you'd be like, yeah, 
being a w- hyper aware in these moments and then you get to like kind of relax that yeah yeah I, you know if, if everybody went out or something like i'd get to hang back and kind of recharge and be like it, it takes energy to be hyper aware and, yeah. yeah i mean maybe me more than other like i think that's part of my personality anyway um but anybody i think who has something they feel is different or not as welcome is gonna act like that and maybe yeah being open about it when you're with groups of people or something just pay attention to the people that might be more quiet i mean maybe they have something to share that's that true. they don't feel comfortable sharing um you know just be i think we should all just be supportive of each other anyway mm. um, and as a community i feel like we're doing that more i and think so too more people that speak out about issues that are important to them and try to get other people involved like i mean i've never been really i guess sort of super political or like involved in too much um so i don't know for me to say <laughs> that you know like tell other people to get involved well i don't do it that yeah. myself but you know it's something you learn too like as as you get older like what's mm-hmm. important and mm-hmm. how to extend yourself that way yeah to, to your point what i got from what i what i'm getting from this too is like yeah people are being more open about it but just like keep keep going keep being aware making yourself more aware mm-hmm. being yeah i think it'll also that'll tie into you know other like issues that people have with each other and other you know groups of people who are you know are different just yeah. ha- have other experiences and maybe aren't maybe feel scared or something like the openness just about everything mm-hmm. um, righteous well said um not human team s what's your what's your most memorable uh moment and most challenging trick in your section for one for the road <laughs> I like how he said a challenging trick because you you I see you battle a lot of tricks like you take you fall you said like you don't fall hard before like you fall a lot yeah fall <laughs> you a fall lot. a lot <laughs> probably more than anyone else I've ever skated with no yeah. well, this Franco come on he falls no. more than Franco Franco falls harder yeah okay got it. <laughs> way he's like yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be here talking to you right now if I yeah felt like dude Franco. oh my god if I felt like Franco yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like the frequency that I fall with the uh, like force <laughs> so you fall with a little more grace more, yeah I more think, frequent but more grace yeah i would okay. say so um you're lighter than franco so well, i think <laughs> I, that's not yeah. Head. yeah <laughs> i could make these jokes about all franco. day I, franco. Yeah. <laughs> I think i do it a little bit on purpose you know, like mm-hmm. falling wise because like, if i know i'm not landing a trick it's like a preservation mode mm-hmm. or just like kind of tumble a little like you absorb the impact yeah Maybe i've just learned to fall like that over the years but i think um, or I just give up if I know it's not working out and just like mm-hmm. <laughs> tuck into a little ball and like roll around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to think of that section there. I feel like I, that was a year, like I skated so much like that. It was kind of, at least for me, I look back on sort of that time of like when I was like, I'm going to get better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'm going to really just kind of go for stuff and that, perspective started with the uh you know the the dco like the delta city open street comps in detroit Mm -hmm. when they started they did a thing where it's like you have to skate every spot so it'd be a street comp with like four or five spots and like if you do not skate every spot you can't win like it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. so i don't know i always go to competitions with the intent of just skate like i always just like to skate i've never have fun like yeah yeah i've never like gone to something and be like i'm gonna win i'm just like i want to skate i want to be part of the event I want to maybe encourage other people to skate mm-hmm. too. And, you know, if I do good, awesome. But if not, like, who cares? It was right. a good time. And whoever won probably really did do awesome. But uh, that kind of like, it, it was like a kink rail at one of their spots. I'm like, man, I would think of so many excuses not to skate this spot in sort of a normal session. Cause I'm just like, eh, I'm like getting old and I don't feel like hurting myself. But yeah, yeah. for the guy, I was like, ah, I got to at least like participate. And there was like sort of a thought process where I'm like, just do it, you know, just make the choice to do the trick and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So I think like that time of one for them, like, I'm just going to do everything I think I can. <laughs> um, Nothing in particular stands out in your mind? I'm thinking the, maybe the, there was a line on two handrails at a top torque sole to a like rocket wall fish brain. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, not that long space between the landing of the rail and the mm-hmm. wall rail. And I, that was one I battled with. Just the with, rhythm. Like, you got to get land and crouch position already. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then it was like, at least for me, I don't really like wall rails. So it was kind of a long one. And it was a real stair rail one. I was like, I'm not good at these. 
but I like it. I need another. Is that trick. why you did it to yeah. kind of push your own boundaries? I guess. Yeah, exactly. And but I, I definitely battled for that. Like I, uh, I mean, I like fell face down the stairs a couple of times. Damn. <laughs> like, I, uh, <laughs> you know, like just that's very Franco esque. Yeah, one of them was definitely. <laughs> now you're in contention. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like missed the rail and like you know ended up like half gapping this like that kind of thing. That one was hard. And then uh, the, I five forty like a sort of do, like a handicap set like there was like this little bank and then two handicap rails and i went off the bank over over the handicap rails and like spun I remember that. out yeah. around it and uh i don't do a lot of that either yeah. and i think at one point it was like i don't know if it was tim one of the guys was like uh maybe you should stop <laughs> you know like i'd come close once and then i'd like 360 it like twice by accident yeah and yeah. then just started getting right like maybe it's always rough when a friend says that it's like, <laughs> yeah like like they should know, but it's right? also like f you too <laughs> but yeah there was someone yeah. was like no i'm gonna do it yeah, yeah that's the total yeah and then I, I mean i did it yeah and i like that was one I remember actually I was like pumped on. Like I landed it and like stomped and like screamed. <laughs> yeah. I like how those become yeah. like the more memorable tricks that we personally have for ourselves, which everyone be like, oh, he didn't do it that good just because like you're not really that kind of person at it. Mm. But like inside you're like, yeah, that's like one of my favorite things I've ever done. Yeah. And no one will ever think that. That was actually one too because years ago I had like 360'd it. And, you know, I was thinking of Rochester, but like that, um, that section was almost all Rochester a couple Syracuse, maybe one Buffalo spot. Mm -hmm. And so sort of thinking of spots where like, I want to go back and see if I can do something better. I'm like, but better is maybe something I can't do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, yeah, that one, yeah, I think that was more of the one I, I think of for that question. So very cool. Um, butter TV has a good one. JPS Rosie's box at winter clash, pickup truck at a town stomp or abandoned <laughs> warehouse at Delta city open. <laughs> well, I mean, I keep running to, JP Damn. everywhere. Yeah, because you go to every comp and so does he. Abandoned warehouse, though. Ugh. Yeah. Just I, for me. Like, I've never been. But. Well, so the Rosie's thing was terrifying. <laughs> so, and I. Um, did yeah. you didn't skate that really? Did I you? just, uh, jumped, like, aired into it, mm -hmm. thinking that I was going to build that up into something else. And then I was just like, mm, mm -hmm. no mm. thanks. No, yeah. I think it's. Yeah. Uh, the pickup truck was terrifying. It was so cool, like, just because it was a weird. That looks thing. that looked very terrifying. But it was kind of janky. <laughs> yeah, you should have tightened the suspension on that truck before doing that stuff. <laughs> yeah, bouncy, and then like the guardrail for somehow, it slid great on your skates. But the second anything like skin or clothes or what, it just stopped dead. No, oh, like so. It's such a cringe. I got like, just like feeling. ejected. There was one where like I right at the end got ejected, got my pants stuck, and it like flipped me up. And it, like I just landed like straight on my side on the uh, ground, like, so that I don't know what if we're choosing based on fun or are we choosing based on which was more terrifying. I think, I think fun. fun, yeah. Okay, Detroit, Your favorite, but, like yeah, yeah Detroit. Detroit was awesome because uh, so I went to Detroit to hang out with Detroit guys. Like I really like Detroit, and um, was getting some pictures to do a wheel scene thing. So look for that soon. Oh, there you uh, go. With uh, Chris Triard, we went out explored detroit like that that was pretty fun um but i usually go out there a little early and try to help set up for dco mm -hmm. and al and i like there was a warehouse spot that some people i guess skateboarders or something had made a couple little quarter pipes in and there was just don did a really sick trick on it and his vod just abandoned it's just yeah i mean it's detroit yeah. it's kind of like that everywhere it's crazy. <laughs> this one was kind of different it was right on their um like market like public market area so it was. It had kind of the city in the background. Like it was a really cool spot. I was kind of surprised that you could skate it. There are other some of their other DIYs have been deeper. Yeah, but we went there with you know Al had some plans to build some obstacles for the competition, and that box was kind of, like it was something he kept suggesting. And we're like, well, let's get you know the other stuff you were planning done, and also what are we going to do for coping? Like you know, so that box ended up we built it from scrap wood from like the building. We just scrounged no everything way. except i think maybe he had one or two two by fours that's sick <laughs> all organic materials take it from there <laughs> the the coping was actually like a, a pipe that was gas in the line? ceiling yeah what? so that's you know sick. that a lot of stuff had already been ripped out of there and there was just like this gas line kind of hanging it's like and she's this we were talking about like ah oh, man we're, how are we gonna that's get crazy. that thing yeah. out of here and al had this like tiny pipe wrench and it just it came like 
like nothing. It just came loose and uh, there were these holes in the ground where Don did that trick in his VOD. He like set slid and like the holes have angle iron in them. Yeah. And they're, they're long. The rim just fell straight in the hole like in a pile of garbage. So it didn't get dented or anything oh, like no. or bent. It wasn't loud. Damn, <laughs> Damn. sick. And so we used that and built that box. So the whole thing with that, like building the box, yeah. the spot, um, and it turned into more like I just wanted to go and skate it a little bit. And we ran into that was after the competition, like the I mean that little box edit. And we ran it like Sam DeAngelis and um Eric Miller were like skating yeah. and we thought it'd be wet. It rained and like all the windows are open. So yeah. we were like, Oh man, it'd be cool to skate there one more time before it's gone or somebody steals the coping to like, mm-hmm. you know, get money for. Mm-hmm. And we ended up going there and it was dry and <laughs> Eric Miller and Sam Gillian, like they'd driven, I think the night before for the competition what? and then we're still skating <laughs> like the box. That's sick. So it was cool. Like we ran into those guys and then I was like, yeah, I'll like, I'm going to just do a couple of tricks like for an Instagram thing. Like, and he just kept pushing. He's like, Hey, why don't you try another one? Why don't mm-hmm. you do another trick? And it's dark. I'm like, let's not set up lights. <laughs> and he's like, I've got them right here. <laughs> Sets Damn. up the lights. So we just kidding. Does it, does it Al? Yeah. Yeah. Sh- big shout prepared. out Al. Al's the man. He's always prepared. Yeah. Al's always got everything. So that I would choose the box. Sick. <laughs> Long explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout My out answer, to like box. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do one more question before we wrap up. Um, well, Andres wants to ask, uh, favorite skater from the past and your favorite contemporary skater? Hmm. Contemporary, contemporary skater. I, I never use that, hear that <laughs> word being used in rollerblading. Ah, oh, that's always so hard. Um, I always pick Jeff Stockwell. And Eric Bailey. Yeah, Jeff's way too good. Like Jeff Stockwell and Eric Bailey, really. I don't know. Like Th- that's like almost like that. Ends, almost <laughs> Jeff can be in either category. Yeah, like, yeah. Could yeah, both yeah, be in either good, category. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to like if, if contemporary is in like sort of today. Yeah, it, it's hard to choose. Like, because uh, you know, I don't. I don't think as we get older, we don't see skating the same way. Like I remember, you know, even though everybody's like our like it's funny to recognize that everybody's our age like just earlier we're yeah. like we're the same age yeah. but i remember you know being like you know 20 and be like oh my god like you know looking mm. up to you or like looking up to other <laughs> pros that i'm like now like we're all the same age yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just sort of funny to think of that in the past where like yeah. it's hard to think of somebody who's like who are your favorite skater now mm-hmm. because you're we're adult. all just like peers yeah, yeah. Right. so back then you know it's easy to think of like jeff stockwell's always been a favorite mm-hmm. i always enjoyed eric bailey so i'm like that was a different era of appreciation, and I know what you. I think I know what you're saying. Like I, I also don't want to pick somebody out, and like leave somebody else. <laughs> like now, is, is is there just like like one person that like you just like get inspired by lately, or? Um, I mean, I, I sort of, I'm trying to think. I haven't like thought of that. <laughs> yeah, in a while. So you were saying that like you your favorite some of your favorite people you looked up to were the same age as you. But like, I feel like now if you had a favorite skater, most likely they're younger, younger than you. Yeah. 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 More, or somebody who's It's a crazy thing about it that way. You know? It is, yeah. Like what they're doing. You know, sort of anybody that's just doing stuff. And I think it's hard too because, you know, our community's small. So you get a big perspective of, of everyone around. But then also it's always, you still end up sort of local, you know, yeah. where you might say somebody or like somebody skating nobody else has ever heard of. Mm-hmm. And I was always like, you like wish more for that person or you're just like how do you not know who that is yeah yeah <laughs> um i mean just like i was just in san francisco like and skated with like cameron talbot and really fucking good. sasha sims like yeah. we skate, got to skate that flower shop oh whole man thing. i saw you skating there so it's like that funny. thing is like, really really hard to skate it's so weird that thing is the toughest thing to skate ever but it's it's that kind of thing where it's like mm-hmm. you know i wouldn't have really known i know who they both are mm-hmm. but i wouldn't have a perspective of their skating in the way of when you session with somebody. Yeah. And I had this like, really awesome time skating that weird thing with two people who could also skate, skate that weird yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I going to not answer that last part. Of <laughs> <laughs> That's fine with us. <laughs> uh, before we end it, shout out to October farmer gave us a $20 super chat. Oh, wow. Thank you. And, um, before we wrap up again, just want to say thank you for being candid, open and, uh, yeah, I think, a great uh, talk. I think it was a great talk, and I picked up a lot of shit from it. And hopefully, <laughs> a lot of people did, too. Yeah, and I feel good about it. Definitely. I mean, I definitely uh, Is there anything else you wanted to say before we wrap up? 
I just want to like thank my sponsors that I never thought I'd have. So, <laughs> <laughs> who are your sponsors? Uh, Rosies and Caltech. Mm-hmm. So, um, which actually pronounced Rosies? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so someone said I be- Caltech uh, could be pronounced something else. <laughs> Somebody too. said before, I forgot who said it. Damn it! Um, being from Rochester, the beginning of Rosies is pronounced like Roch, like Rochester, Roch, Rochies, Rochies. All right. Rochies. We're just gonna, we're just, we're just gonna leave that. <laughs> uh, straight from the Italians, it was more like roaches than like roaches. Anything. Okay, like uh, with a rolled R. Mm-hmm. If you were actually roaches. gonna say it, but I mean, we're American. We yeah, we say do things poorly. Tomato, tomato. Or, That's it. Houston yeah. house. We call it sure. soccer, man. It's clearly football. Yeah, it's clearly <laughs> football. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, but yeah, just uh, thanks again and. Um, Hell yeah, Grant. Uh, uh, if you don't follow us, by the way, still, I don't know what you're doing because <laughs> you're watching this and you don't follow us. So that's really <laughs> weird. So go follow us. And you're going to want to follow us because we got more stuff coming on yeah, today. Yeah, we got a ton of stuff. Today's going to be an action, an action packed, action packed day. day. Is action packed the right? And we might even see today. Oh, ooh, it's, it's, dry it's dry it outside. It's dry outside. I see a lingering of a sun. It's dry outside there. Cool. So we're going to have one more <laughs> show coming on. Maybe get a session with these guys. Yes. Get you guys some Instagram, some stuff. YouTube, subscribe, notification bell. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. If you like what we're doing here, please support our Patreon. It gives us the ability to do this more. And also iTunes, five-star uh, rating and yeah. a review if you like. A very nice review. Grant, Please. thanks Please. again for everything. Thank you, guys. Hi, you, Grant. Thanks for coming on. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, stay 31. tuned. We'll be back soon. Cool. See you later. Peace.